and the recording is on so let's hope that it's going to be so it looks good looks so far so good is this uh big enough for you guys so it's clear enough all right so welcome to class or the course that is entitled as a simulation of a mechatronic machine uh, this is a worth of five credits my name is Aki Mikola and I will be your teaching teacher in uh, all the lectures uh, and there will be another teacher too and another teacher is uh, my teaching assistant his name is uh, Perttu Juvonen so uh, um, my office is located in a building number six in a seventh floor so that's uh, the, the top floor and the office number is uh, uh, six, six seven two nine and uh, you may find my, my, you know, if you wanted to stop by my office, you are very welcome to do so. You may also send me an email, and my email address is simply mikkola, M-I-K-K-O-L-A, at L-U-T dot F-I. Maybe if you want to make sure that I'm available, I, th I think it is a good idea to first send me an email and set the meeting that way, or you can just stop by and see if I'm available. Perto is only available via emails, and of course he's available in guided tutorials so so this is it so this is where things getting started and just to make sure that my youtube officer is happy with the streaming is there a thumb up or not yet so is it still uh, because there's a bit of a delay in uh, streaming so is it still thinking oh is it maybe because there are two youtube signs that i'm using uh, there is a one channel that that was that I was using last year that will not be used this year but because I was a little late when setting things up I didn't get the permission to do the streaming so that's why the first streaming is via that old class or that old um, channel can you check it out the, the old channel and see how is the streaming the old channel is it all right yeah, this is important because we have a total of uh, 146 students in this class so when you do the math you can see that we have here or we have like i don't know 40 50 students in a class rest will follow through the streaming and recording so that's why those recordings are extremely important for most of the students for you too because uh, later there's no need to i mean that you guys don't need to make any notes but try to focus on the subject matter itself and then later you can go back and forth with the recordings and see if there's something that is a bit unclear to you okay so how is my office so is a so is a hold on so the link is not operating <clears throat> so let me see let me see if i can find that using my phone and also like last year there are every now and then a little bit of technical difficulties related to yeah there's a life there's a life on so we are live so it looks good at least to me oh not really looking good because still is in a yeah it looks good looks good so can you check that uh, you are in the right channel if you just uh, go to youtube and you type the the code of the course and the code of the course is this uh, TK70A001. That's the way to find uh, that channel. Yeah, you, you can find it by just logging into YouTube but then using um, <coughs> this. Now, hold on. I need to put. So it's live. So we are doing good. How are we doing? Good. Okay, good. So let me. Okay, so then let's get started. So what I would like to do today is uh, I would like to explain you the ground rules. I would like you to be absolutely sure what are the requirements to pass this class, to pass this course. And this is important to understand because we are flexible if you let us know in, in advance with some of the difficulties. But if you are coming late and you say that you are not aware of these rules, you're not, we are not accepting that because the rules will be explained next. Then 
I want to spend a little bit of time to introduce the subject matter to you. What is the simulation? What exactly we're we doing in this class? And what is the purpose of this class? And then my, I suppose that that all will take some 45 minutes, maybe even longer than that. And uh, once I'm done with the ground rules and introduction, then what follows is a real deal. And that's uh, first mathematics needed in a course. Yes, we need a little bit of mathematics in this course. It's not too involving, but you need to know a little bit about the matrix operation, a little bit about the vectors, not too much. And I'm already scared you to know that I'm hoping that you are using symbolic mathematical tools when solving weekly homeworks. You can do it also by using pen and paper, but that's not my recommendation because this course is not about the mathematics, but applying the mathematics to analyze the dynamics of, of different kind of uh, mechanisms and, and systems, all right? And then uh, after mathematics, we're gonna get started and we're gonna take a look how is uh, kinematics. And we get started in the kinematics by such that I first explaining how to describe a rigid body. This will be fundamental something that is extremely important to understand in the very beginning. And now when we get started, it first may sound like that this is a ridiculously simple course. And it is a fairly simple course. But it's important that you follow in the recordings and streamings regularly because soon things becoming increasingly difficult. And then as you will see here, lecture number four is about virtual displacement concept that is very difficult to understand. So we're starting to speak about something that is fundamentally difficult. So that's why you have to follow all the time and you need to don't think about it in a way that this is so simple that I can easily catch up. You may not be able to do so. All right, but this is, uh, these are the subjects, what I'm about to tell you in this period, which is a period number one. So we get started from the kinematics, which is a basics in a pretty much all the simulation. And then we are looking a little bit about the constraint equations, that's still kinematics, and then we move on to dynamics. So how we can describe the dynamic equilibrium for different kind of dynamic systems. Then uh, hopefully right after the first period, when there's a first midterm exam, we're gonna move on to topic that is related to actuators. So we're gonna look a little bit about how to describe flexible bodies, and then we're gonna focus on how to model actuators. This class, we will focus on hydraulic actuators. So how to describe hydraulic actuators together with the mechanical simulation. And then uh, something that is more pleasant topics in the very end. So there's gonna be real-time simulation, game technology. Maybe you like games, I don't know, but uh, if you happen to like the games, that may be something very enjoyable for you. All right, so that's uh, pretty much the, what I'm about to explain in this, this course. A few words about the practical arrangements. So the first thing is the lectures. So the lectures in the first period, know that this is the first period only. Those will be on Mondays this time, and it's possible to follow the lecture by coming physically here in this lecture room or alternatively following the streaming that is coming out from the YouTube. Then uh, also this time it's good you to know that I'm about to ask something from you during the lecture. So there will be in-class quizzes during the, during the lectures. And in order to answer those in-class quizzes, you have to install the Socrative app, Socrative app. So now while you listen to me, make sure that you have a Socrative app ready in your phone or computer or tablet whatever is a media that you're used to deal with. And also something that is also very important for you to know is that this year I'm expecting you to log in with your student ID number. So you have to know your student ID number in order to be able to answer my questions. All right, do you know it? Remember? If not, try to figure that out. We are still you know, a few slides away from the first in-class quiz. and. Uh, that's going to be something that, you know, for me, I know because I know that we are not going to communicate. It's not going to happen. I mean, like every year I'm asking, like, do you have any comments or questions? Students never have. So that's why I'm the one that is pushing you. So I'm asking questions from you. 
uh, you can avoid it by being very active and asking questions for me. Anyways, so that's how it goes. So the YouTube, oh yeah, the one th thing that is important. So there, let's, like I mentioned, there are two YouTube channels. The one that I used last year and the one that I will use this year. It is your right to check it out how were the lectures last year because it's a more or less same subject matter, same topic. And you can even, if you want, of course you can see what are the class quizzes that I asked last year. So you can look at the recordings in, you know, ahead of the time before the lecture and then you are prepared to in class quizzes. All right? Tutorials. So there is uh, two different groups, tutorial groups. The one that is on Wednesday morning will not be available, so that will be canceled. That's simply because we are expecting that the students that are physically here in the university should squeeze into two different classes. And those classes that will be available is the one that is in the Thursday morning from uh, 8.15 to 10 o'clock, and it is in a lecture room. Well, this, by the way, is in the student union building, uh, student union building room 216. And then on Friday, that too is in the morning, so from 10, 15 to noon. So those are the two groups that will be available. And tutorials will get started next week, not this week. So this is something that is very important for you to know. Clear? Good. All right. So tutorials. So there will be a total of 12 weeks of tutorials. Like I mentioned, uh, the first one will be next week. Not this week, but next Wednesday. Excuse me, Thursday. Thursday is the first class. Yeah, Thursday morning. And then uh, there are some things that will be, you know, the teaching assistant bet will help you to accomplish two assignments. And the idea of those assignments is to prepare you to solve the simulation work. What is that? We'll get back to that uh, after a few slides. Then, uh, <coughs> then those um, students that are not physically here, those are the Jedi students and the Mech Elect students, there will be intensive tutorials available for those students. That will be um, during the um, midterm exam week. But um, details will be available a bit later. Then uh, for Finnish students, there is some previous knowledge that I'm expecting you to have. I don't think that is really important because what matters in this class is attitude. If you just have this Gandhi attitude, you can make it happen, even though that you have no prior knowledge about, you know, mechanics or other stuff, it would be fine, believe me. All right? Then grading, this is the deal. This is what you've been looking at. So you wanna know how to score high from this course? Here's the formula that make it, make it happen. So let's take a look. So in this equation, I have two items that are mandatory items. The first mandatory item is a written exam. You have to do it. There are two alternatives to do it. What are those alternatives? We'll get back to that soon. But you must do the written exam and you must do the simulation work. So those are the two mandatory items. Then there is something that helps you to score high if that's what you're expecting to, to do in this class. So those things that help you to score high are weekly homework. Those are the ones that is already available in the Moodle site, course Moodle site, and in-class quizzes. So it makes sense to answer those in-class quizzes because you can easily, well, in my mind, easily you can get some uh, additional 0 0.25 points. So that's the formula. So let's look at this formula then. So let's see how it goes. So uh, let me use a pen here. So here, let's say that you're an outstanding student, you're really a fit one. So you're scoring five out of the written exam. So you get five out of that, all right? Then uh, simulation work, you know, it's scale from minus one to one. So if you're really doing no good at all, we're gonna take one point off from your written, uh, written exam. Or if you're doing really good, we can add one more point to your written exam. Say that you're really doing good. So it's gonna be five plus one. And then weekly homework, you're gonna do all that. So you're gonna get 0 0.25. And in class quizzes, that's uh, 0 0.25. So what is this? So it's gonna be six and a half, which will be rounded up. So that's seven. Think about it. 
you get seven in this class. Well, you don't, because you know the maximum is five. So the maximum is not going to happen that I will give you seven out of five. I mean, the student union, I mean, the student affairs office, they will come after me if I do something like that. So it's not possible. So the maximum is five out of five. Now, do the math. Which is the most economic way to make it happen? So you should follow the something that is called uh, minimum energy principle. So investing the minimum energy, yet scoring high. So what is the way that fits you the best? That I don't know, but you can figure that out. Maybe, you know, if I can give you a few hints, really what helps a lot and with some easy things to cover is in class quizzes. Because I'm asking something ridiculously simple. I'm asking like almost like, you know, how you like the weather today. So it's, it's very simple. So you can just follow my lectures, you can score high and you can get extra points from in class quizzes. Weekly homework, same thing. Easily you can get this 0.25. And look, it only makes sense to do this together. So if you only do in class quizzes but not home weekly homework, it helps no help at whatsoever. So do the both. So you can get one extra point and you can round it up. So it helps. Easy thing to cover. Easy thing. This, you know, it makes sense to do it in a decent way, so such that you can get zero. I mean, something that will not affect your written exam. And then written exam, you should do your best effort. Try to score, say, four out of five. That's it. Four out of five from written exam. And then uh, 0 0.25, excuse me, 5, 0 0.25, so it's going to be 5. Think about 5 out of this class. Then you can be really, really proud of yourself because look at the subject matters. So we're speaking about something like luck runs, multipliers, all these nasty stuff. Yet you're scoring 5 out of 5. It's possible. You can make it, you can make it happen. All right. Read an exam in details. So what are the ways to make it happen? Two alternatives. So you can either do it in a classic way or conventional way. Conventional way means that you are participating in the written exam. I mean, physical written exam. You need to sign it in and you go to one of these big uh, lecture rooms and then you do the exam. That's possible. Not my recommendation. My recommendation is to do two midterm exams. Why this is my recommendation? Simply because midterm exams covers half of the course. So it's really the easy steps to score high. So the first midterm exam will be right after the first six lectures. So it's going to be week, is it week, um, yeah, here it is mentioned, 43. That's when you're going to be organized. So there's a midterm exam that covers only the, the material that we've been discussing during the first period. So it really makes sense to do it. So then the next midterm exam will be once we completed all the other subject matters. Now, if you select this opportunity, then you must be sure that you are able to participate to both exams because one exam is not enough. So we are expecting you to do both. So how it goes? So this is online exam. So you will have one week time to enter your answers and you will have two attempts to your attempts. So one week, so whatever is a good time for you. So you can get started on a, a Monday morning. You can make your first attempt. And if you see that I'm not scoring particularly high, not the way that I'd like to score, then you can keep on studying and redo it end of the week. So Sunday afternoon. And the highest will be accounted. Highest will be accounted. Two attempts. The same thing in the next midterm exam. Again, you can make your first attempt to see how is your level of knowledge. Just kind of like to make sure that you're in the right scale. And then uh, keep on studying more and then do the final effort. Okay? Makes sense. Then uh, any questions or comments so far? Clear? All clear? Yes, sir. Ah, I love you too. So it's a, uh, so we have, oh, what is this? We are communicating? Come on. You, this, 
Yeah, unbelievable. You make me so happy that I need to take a little bit of coffee. Ah, please, people, be like that because it makes me happy. Seriously, it makes me happy because you just can areas that I'm explaining, 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 and you guys are sleeping, sleeping, and sleeping. And it's annoying. It's annoying. If you want to sleep, don't come here. Stay in your apartment and watch the recording, I mean, streaming. And while you're watching the streaming, you can maybe open the Netflix, see if there's a good movies going on. That's one way to do it. But you're not going to pass this course if you do this. Okay. All right. What else? Was there something else in my mind? Oh, yeah. The final exams. These are the days for the final exams. So the first one is in end of, well, mid in December, end of January, and uh, in March. Don't do it. Don't do this. Because, uh, you know, this is hard to cover. And also something good you to know that, you know, the written exam comes, comes progressively more difficult. So the easy attempt will be this one, the one in December. The one in January is already so difficult that you're going to cry when you see the paper. Seriously, it's so difficult. Yes, sir. This one? Oh, so the voice is not good. So let me see. This is supposed to be all right. So there's a voice problem. Is it uh, helping? Because uh, this, uh, for some reason, this nice uh, portable mic that I have, every now and then is not working the way that I'm expecting that to work. Is it getting better? Okay. All right. So hopefully it's better now. All right. So I was about to explain that the second exam is so difficult that you're going to cry when you see the exam paper. Third one. I cannot pass even by myself. So, so it's very, very difficult. So don't make it. So don't postpone it. E you know, sooner you do it, easier your life will be. All right? Now, simulation works. So it, this is something that uh, there will be student perfect input values. And the, the assignment will be given to you on, in week 44. And it will be created as OK minus, OK, and OK plus. And you know how this will be um, interpreted. So if OK minus means that we're going to take one point off from your written exam. OK means that no effect whatsoever. And OK plus, we're going to add one point to your written exam. OK. So that's how it goes. Weekly homework. So there is a. Um, Total of uh, 19 points from 13 different tasks. Um, the first one is already out there in the Moodle site, so you can take a look how it how it seems to be. And if you're scoring 14 or more points, I'm gonna I will get you this additional 0.25 points. So that's how it goes. So not necessarily need to do all these weekly homework, but a good part of it. So that's enough if you do 14 points. And how is the scoring situation? I will let you know. So I'm hoping that uh, the update will be available every week in a model side. So hopefully that's how it goes. In-class quizzes. I'm not sure if you're familiar with these in-class quizzes, but uh, it's like mini exams. Mini exams. Because when I'm explaining something, I want to see how is your understanding of that. And uh, to, to make it happen, you know, in order to enter your answers to this, this mini exam, you have to install that Socrative app to your phone or iPad or whatever is uh, com whatever is the hardware you're using. And now, again, it is not necessary to score all the points, but it's enough if you get 16 points out of uh, what's the maximum, 24 points. That's enough. Okay. So now we're going to practice a little bit. I'm going to put the Socrative on, so you guys remember your student ID number. So you can log in to Socrative, you can Google the Socrative. Hold on, I need to put it on. Just a second. No, oh, it's a kind of slow connection, so it's coming. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm uh, using my teacher lucky, you use your student lucky. Okay, I'm already here. So, uh, now, my first question is this, in class quiz number one. How are you doing today? You know, this reflects the level of difficulty I have in my in-class quizzes. So how are you doing today? That's my first question. How you can enter the answer, how you can enter your answer in this question? By first googling the Socrative. Once you find the Socrative site, you can log in and it asks what is the room number? The room number we use is LUT. So the room is LUT. So what is it to remember? And then next thing it asks is what is your student ID number? Enter your number and then you get to enter your answer. Okay, so let me put it on so just to see how we are doing. Hold on. Okay, so it's on. So I can see that, uh, so these are the options. So this is not going out for um, for online participants, but once you log in, you can see that, you know, the, the options are the same that in the slide. So the options are, I'm doing great, I'm doing great. B is surviving, and C is, it's Monday, what do you expect? Yes, sir. It's not working. You sure that is a correct one? Okay. Okay, so, so there was an advice that if you have if your student ID number is like zero two six seven, so you need to take a zero off in the beginning. Okay. Yeah, in the beginning. So uh, see if it works. So I have thirty seven students. Okay. This is important because Previous years, I was asking that please use your student ID number, and it's not working out because people are using once they one, once it asks your your name, people are putting their LUT. Come on, so how can I know who is uh, who is who? So there's no way to know that. So that's why now it's mandatory to use student ID number. That's the only way to be able to answer the question. Okay. Now, while you are thinking, how are you doing? I'm uh, make a little bit of settings to my streaming. So there was a complaint that my voice is not strong enough. So try to put the volume on. Okay. So let's see. Uh, 67 students. So we get back to that in a second. Then uh, while you're thinking that, let me explain a few other practical matters. So all the course material, everything that I'm that I can ask in written exam, will be available in a Moodle site. So there will be no outside information other than this available in Moodle site. So log in, check it out. What's already there? There is something that is important to, to already have with you all the time, and that is lecture notes. Lexion note is extremely important piece of information. Keep on reading that regularly. Keep it with you all the time. So whatever you have some extra time, open it and read it, enjoy it. Okay, so then uh, handouts, so lecture note that's uh, in a Moodle database. Well, lecture notes, tutorials, everything will be there. Homework, assignment, correct answers, everything will be in a Moodle database. Okay. And recordings too. I mean, the recordings will be in the YouTube, but there will be a link to YouTube site. Clear. So, my advice is to you: How you can pass this course? Well, the first thing is that you know attitude is what matters. So, can-do attitude. You have to have a can-do attitude because soon you will recognize that my slides is full of parcel this, parcel that. So it's going to be a nightmare. You can still master it. Believe me. You can make it happen. Breathe deeply, relax, and you will master it with your can-do attitude. And of course, 
that is there is no only thing is needed here you also need to work here and you need to work such the way that you follow the lectures and read the handouts every single week that's what i already mentioned to you we get started slowly it's ridiculously simple but then suddenly we're speaking about lacrons multipliers concepts that are very difficult to understand virtual displays and virtual work this and that parts of this that parts of that so it's going to be difficult but once you follow this every week every day it's going to be fine all right and do exercises by yourself i mean that there is a million ways to cheat but i don't know who is that you who is that you wanted to cheat the only person that is losing is you if you wanted to do it that way if you want to do it do it there will be no controlling i mean that my teaching assistant may be able to catch you maybe not but you're the one that will lose all right clear are we doing this this is the way we can communicate means yes they understand so we all understand this means no clue i don't understand what is that no idea this is very confused very confused so what it is this awesome very nice okay good so let's move on let's look at the introduction and uh, what's time so we still have like uh, 14 minutes before short break and i'm thinking that uh oh by the way now is by the way good time to ask because the crown rules crown rules is already explained clear fair makes sense okay so let me ask you this what is your what, what is the number you're happy with you're happy with three out of five which is already very good yes no no oh, okay so uh so it's two out of five oh other side other direction four out of five five out of five oh nice we'll see we'll see what's going to happen we'll see okay but any questions regarding the practical matters all clear good very good so let's uh look at the introduction then oh sorry about that yeah so that was a guideline i was not able to see that you don't see this so it's a little bit of your responsibility that uh, you know you need to make sure that you know what comes to you makes sense also i have a little bit of tendency to repeat myself particularly what comes to talks so i'm telling my few talks like 10 times during this class some point during the course it is your responsibility to raise a hand and say okay please this is already six times that you're telling that story so can you please stop can you do that for me good all right i think we have a do we have an uh, understanding we do all right so now we're gonna move on to introduction so uh what is an objective of the course what what the simulation thing what is mentioned in a title of the course what that is actually implying with so what, what what's the deal with the simulation and uh how is that we can build one how is that we can build the simulation model and why why we do that what are the advantages so what in earth is uh, you know the our motivation to do so so a little bit about those big pictures related to this course this by the way is very important to understand why we do this course not to score five out of five i mean that too plus we have to gain the knowledge that we don't have prior to this course what is the knowledge we're gonna gain i will explain that in a second all right so I, I have two bullets to answer what is an objective what is a reason to participate in this course well first reason of course is that this is mandatory course if you want to get the master degree so this is the only way to do it you cannot skip this course but other than that why is a what is a reason to do it well i want to explain and have you the understanding about the potential what is a you know what the potential related to computer simulation computational dynamics what's the field of computational dynamics i would like you to have an understanding about that that by the way is very different that you're used to deal with 
because I'm sure that you have already passed the course like Dynamic 1 and Dynamic 2 or whatever are the title of those courses that people hate big time in uh, bachelor level studies. What are the name of the courses? Dynamics. And I'm sure you hate it. And there's a good reason to hate it because you say, oh, they're so difficult that it's hard to get a grip. So hard to understand what is this dynamics. This course provides you a little bit of different perspective the topic of dynamics because we're using computational dynamics. We are not trying to figure out equation of motion by using some innovative technique like seeing relation this and that and you know substituting this and that. We don't do that. We just follow the certain steps. And once following the certain steps, we will get equation of motion automatically, no matter what's the system you wanted to analyze. So that, uh, by the way, is a beauty of this class. So it's very systematic. Also, what comes to kinematic analysis, we're going to follow the certain steps. And once we complete the steps, that's it. We have the response. So that's what the computational dynamics. And I would like you to understand the potential related to that procedure. But also, I want you to understand what is a relation between the computer simulation and reality. Because computer simulation is not equal to reality. It tries to resemble the reality, but there are some clear differences. What are those differences? It's very important to understand what these differences are. And then you need to learn to use simulation tools. What tool? Well, depending how uh, seriously you take this course. But those are the, really the objectives. We're going to look at that in a later of this course, we're going to look at the big picture, like how is that we can use um, computational dynamics in different product processes, not just in a product development, but also in another product processes like marketing, maybe, um, you know, customer, customer value analysis and stuff like that. So I would like you to have a kind of like bigger picture than just the product development. All right. So what in details then? So what that we're gonna do then? Well, we're gonna look a little bit about we're gonna we will look a little bit about you know how we're gonna we're gonna create the equation of motion that describes the mechanical component. You know, mechanical component. If you look at the like hydraulic driven crane, so on here is a piler here, lift arm, swing arm, and that's uh, let me see. So there is a. Yeah, yeah, so streaming is still all right. Good, good, okay. So so those are the mechanical components that these kind of like typically made out of the steel structures or aluminum or whatever material, but very important to understand that the mechanical component is not the machine because mechanical components don't move without actuators. And what is important in terms of machine performance, dynamic performance, is that we have to look how is it we can combine the actuator models with the mechanical models? And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna also the model the hydraulic actuators and to see how the system, coupled system this time, how it performs, how is its dynamic performance. We could, we're not gonna focus on this, but we could also add the control system there. We could even add the user to this system if we are solving this set of equation of motion or it is set of equations in real time. So it's possible to make a game-like environment, which is very accurately physics-based game-like environment. So that's what we are looking at. So that's kind of the big picture of this course. So what is the simulation then? You already know it, what is that? So it's all based on well-known physics laws. So it's like an example is a Newton second law, which says that uh, Externally applied force is equal than inertia forces. By the way, this is an equation that we keep on repeating. So this is kind of level of difficulty. So we're saying externally applied force is equal than inertia forces. How difficult is that? I think, you know, you know, I already, I don't know, two high school people learned this. So we're kind of applying the same equation, this time in a little bit of different perspective, because we want to solve this equation of motion by using computers. How it happens? It happens in a way that we can express this Newton's second law by using matrices and vectors. And once we have matrices and vectors, then we say computers, go ahead and solve it for us. 
that's exactly what the computer simulation is. How it look? And you look this up. You know, this is finally how this simple equation four is equal, the next general applied force is equal, the inertia force is how that turned out to be. So it's turned out to be very nasty. So we have mass matrices, all kind of other force uh, vectors, this and that. But you're gonna learn all this. So you're gonna learn how the computer can understand this equation motion and how the computer can solve it for you. And then also how to make an interpretation regarding the results. Now, what is a simulation? What it means? Well, in nutshell, in summary, it means accelerated learning process. It helps us to learn faster. And if we can learn faster, we can make an improvement for different perspective. So that's in a nutshell what the simulation is about. It's not meaning that you can just let the computer do the work and you don't do the thinking. It's quite opposite. Is that the computer will help you to better learn learn that faster and that's exactly what the simulation is so we're looking the accelerated learning ways maybe i should change the name of the course like accelerated learning would that be more nicer i don't know well hard to say no not really you don't like this you don't like learning business so not for you so okay but that's what it is then i have you know what we are using then so we are using the method that is called multi-body system dynamics. And as the title implies, it is a method that applies to system that consists of multiple bodies. And how these multiple bodies are moving, that we can solve by using a multi-body system dynamics. Now, something important you to understand is that your master level students, so that for the master level students, is not enough to learn the use of commercial software. I'm not, you know, that's not the really the objective of this course, even though that it was mentioned as one of the objectives. But I would like you to understand the theory behind the software. That's what is really important, because if you learn to use a commercial software, fine. But if you don't understand the theory behind, there's a great risk that you can make some serious mistakes and you don't understand the way the system operates. Also, once you understand the theory behind, it makes it easy you to adapt your knowledge from one software to another, or do things by yourself. That's possible too. So we are emphasizing the theory in this class, which is a little bit of bad news because, yes, it's a theory, so it's a quite a bit of mathematics. But doable mathematics, let's put it this way. So what are the, the softwares that then can be used in order to create this equation of motion? Well, in this class, we are using the Simscape. You're gonna learn it, you will get started next week. But there are alternatives like Adams, which is mentioned here. This is LMS Virtual Lab, which is another alternative. There's a many, many commercial software that is capable to create the equation of motion and solve them automatically. We're gonna look one of them. But more importantly, we can look theory behind. Makes sense. Hopefully it makes sense. So now I have a few examples here. So the first example is related to biomechanics. By the way, biomechanics is a dynamic system as well. You know, it's like this body here is kind of, well, it is actually a one application of multi-body system dynamics because it consists of multiple bodies, you know, different joints that combines these bodies together. There is an actuator, which is not the hydraulic actuator, but equally strong. Then its muscle this time is moving these bodies back and forth. That's how it goes. So I can analyze my motion by using multi-body system dynamics. Example that I would like to show to you is uh, related to bone strengthening process. It's also possible in a multi-body system dynamics to model some of the bones as a flexible bodies. And if you model them as a flexible bodies, you can analyze the strains and strain rates in both to your body. And this is a good example of what the multi-body system can do for you because it's very hard to measure the bone strains and strain rates in practice. You can do it, but it's a nasty business. So it goes such a way that you take a knife, you lift your tibia like here, you make a cut here, 
it's going to hurt like no limit. You make a cut here on the law, go all the way and you reach the bone. Then you take all the flash off. You put the strain gains in your bone. You put all the flash back. Take a huge amount of painkillers. And then you exercise. Or alternatively, you can do all this same by using computer simulation. No pain. So, which one do you prefer? And really the thing that in a bone strengthening process, the area that is most interesting is this hip region. Here, if you wanted to measure the strain here, you know, the volunteer will not be alive after that. So it's not possible to do it. But with computer simulation, you can make it happen. So let's see if I can run this for you. long way to go before we close before we go to break I would like to take a look how it's in glass squeeze oh, here, here, here. so what happens is that the subject is just walking uh, you know the different colors are def reflecting the deformation of the bone well you know simple like simple thing but again it shows the power of simulation, so you can learn about how is a bone strengthening process. Remember, accelerated learning. And this is something that the medical doctors, they can use this information when they make their recommendations. Here's a, I don't know what this is, a pedaling machine. Same thing, but different exercise. Not just the walking and sitting, but a little bit of different exercise. And then... Uh, you can, like I mentioned already, you can also solve this equation of motion in real time. Let me see if I can do that. This seems not to cooperate. Yeah, it cooperates. This shows the real time simulation. So it's pretty much the same concept that in offline simulation. The difference is that in a real time simulation, you're solving the equation of motion with synchronizing that to real time. Why you do that? because that allows the user to be engaged to your model. And that then can be used in many different product processes. You know, just to give you an example, you know, in a many of the products, what is really difficult to capture is a human perspective, because human have the difficult thing for our engineers, and that's called feelings. You know, how is it you can understand what is exactly that pleased to your customers? Solution for that could be the real-time simulation. So you can ask your customers to try the product prior to building it. And this is the better to provide a better understanding about what is a customer needs. Again, accelerated learning. This time learning customer needs. And you know, these are just the different examples where the real time simulation can be used. We get back to that in the very end of the course. Last not the last, but the second last lecture is about real time simulation and game technology. Okay. So what are the games you guys are playing? Fortnite? No? That's for what? To violent? Or oh, you don't release that information? Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> benefits of uh, simulation. Oh and I think we have a it's time to have a break. So uh, we wanted to reduce the number of physical prototypes. We wanted to accelerate the product development. Although that this is emphasizing product development, it can be applied to other product processes than product development. And then, uh, so we can analyze something that is very dangerous, like, you know, this bone strengthening process. You don't want to do that in reality. And, uh, you know, features that are difficult or even are impossible to measure, or you can just get the loads for different design purposes. Now, let's take a look. How is my glass quiz? Okay, so you want to see the scoring? How is the way scoring in the glass quiz? By the way, see if the two students are still thinking how, uh, how is that they doing. Should I, should I just take a look? Ah, uh, everyone was scoring correctly. So the first point is already there. So what is left? 13 others and you're done. Okay, so... So what do you say? Should we have like uh, 10 minutes? Okay, 10 minutes. I'm gonna stop recording and uh, check what's the deal with that the voice thing. If there is still complaints regarding the voice.